a look at our muon telescopes. Here is one with which we detect muons that are created by cosmic rays impacting the atmosphere. These telescopes consist of two or three scintillation detectors. There is one, there is another one. This is telescope number two. Again, you can see the two scintillation detectors. The detectors are red and the information is amplified using photomultipliers. This is an example of a photomultiplier. The scintillator sits on top of this photomultiplier. The incoming muon creates photons through scintillation in the, in the crystal, which could be sodium iodide, as in this case, or it could be plastic scintillators, as in the case of this triple detector telescope. You can see one, two, three detectors in that case. In that case, the um, scintillation is created in plastic. The photons are then turned into, into electrons, just a few, which are not enough to, not in a large number, so that one could uh, read out a signal. However, the photomultiplier, which you see here, then amplifies this by accelerating them over one kilovolt, and over that acceleration, the electrons hit these electrodes, which you can make out here, one, two, three, four, about ten of them, and at each impact, more electrons are created so that eventually um, a measurable voltage pulse can be detected. And every detected voltage pulse looks like this. There is one over there. You can see an analog signal of that voltage, which we then turn in our electronics into a logic pulse, a square pulse. And once we have identified a muon, then we count it in uh, scalars. And uh, this system, for example, at the moment is, has counted 611 events. The other, the other telescope has counted 1,636 events. And the triple telescope, which has the largest counting efficiency, has counted 2,804 events. Now, how do we select muon events from background gamma ray radiation, which is also detected by our detector system. That's achieved by requiring that the muon fires both detectors, detector 1 and detector 2, and that's possible because muons have energies of the order of giga electron volts and they can penetrate both of the detectors, whereas gamma rays are typically absorbed in one of them or scattered out of the way. So by having two detectors aligned like this, we're not only selecting the, the muons against uh, gamma rays, but we're also defining a, a direction. So it's the coincidence measurement and the fact that we require high energies that we can discriminate um, the muons from, from gamma rays. Now, what is the story of the muon anyway? Where do they originate? Well, it's a big story, and it starts with a supernova out in space. Supernovae create shock fronts, and those shock fronts move away from the point of the supernova. And in that shock front, you have a lot of material, and a lot of it is charged. And one of the most abundant elements in the universe is hydrogen. In fact, it is the most abundant element. And those protons are positively charged. They're whirled about by electric and magnetic fields so that the proton gains energy. That energy then eventually, that kinetic energy then eventually allows it to, to leave the shock front and become a cosmic ray. Not much happens to a cosmic ray for a long time because it has to travel huge distances, but some of these cosmic rays hit our Earth, and they encounter our Earth at the top of the atmosphere, about 15 kilometers above ground. And uh, the proton might come in and then collide with a nitrogen atom. It completely smashes the nitrogen atom into a shower of many particles in a nuclear reaction which we call spallation reaction. The particles in the shower at the top of the atmosphere also have very high energy so that they themselves create nuclear reactions. And the outcome of this might, might be a K or a pi minus particle as I've drawn here. A pi minus is a subatomic particle that doesn't have a very long half-life so it decays quickly and the decay products are a mu minus and the, the um, muon antineutrino. So this is the origin of the muon that we detect in the laboratory over here with our three telescopes. Now, why do we point the telescopes into different directions? Well, that has to do with the, 
the fact that on perpendicular impact, the muons only have to have to uh, travel through 15 kilometers of um, of atmosphere, whereas on horizontal impact, that, that distance through the atmosphere might be of the order of a few hundred kilometers, and the attenuation of the, the muon flux is much larger. Now, why does the muon make it to the ground anyway? It only has a half-life of 2.2 microsecond, and that, even traveling at the speed of light, only gives it 600 meters. However, special relativity ensures that it experiences time dilation, so therefore it can make it through 50 kilometers and more and then hit the ground with a huge amount of energy. And schematically, it then goes through both scintillation detectors and, as I said before, we're discriminating against energy and require both of these detectors to fire in coincidence and that tells us that we have a muon and that increments our counters. Now, once we change the angle, we measure due to the different attenuation, different count rates, and down here you can see our results plotted as the normalized count rate versus the zenith angle. So this is vertical impact and we've got the highest count rate, and this is intermediate and this is horizontal impact at an angle of uh, 70 degrees and then 90 degrees, and you can see that the data follows nicely what you expect, namely a cosine squared theta distribution, which is the consequence of the different attenuation depending on, on impact angle of the atmosphere. So this is a big story, starting out there with a supernova by a cosmic rise, atmosphere, nuclear physics, spallation, special relativity, and then finally we're back here on Earth and in the laboratory and with our one, two, three muon telescopes we can detect these subatomic particles which are subject to special relativity. And uh, remember, we had a, a lower number before. Now we've, we're up to 2,806. So over the time I uh, talked to you, the, the counter has incremented a bit. <laughs>